something a little more unusual not unusual in the terms of the hardware but unusual in the terms that the company that actually produced these or rather rebadged these was um, a well-known company called Acorn now in the sort of doldrums of the Acorn years um, sort of throughout the uh, late 80s early 90s they did a few strange things and I think one of the strangest thing they did was the Acorn pocketbook it's badged as Acorn it's got an acorn badge on the front as well and it was marketed as an acorn machine but effectively all it was was a rebadge scion 3 i mean nothing physically changed on it this is your scion 3 and this is your acorn pocketbook now they even kept the the silver and black label on it just about identical and the only real way you can tell it's acorn is the little green acorn and silver logo on the machine itself in the corner everything else seems to be identical but there were two things that acorn did that um, I thought was quite a nice step but I didn't realize it was such a good step until we did the video on the um, keyboards with Marcus now what's it like when you use it on the move same good or good is it keys too small no too big no okay right side okay. Right so what would you prefer to use? The rubber keys on the ZX Spectrum? Yeah. Or those smaller keys on there? Keys. Because I can like carry it and do it do it when I'm away from home. Okay, what if you were just using it to type on? It'll be it's still I I could use it. Because in that video we used the um Scion 3 series 3 this one here and there were a few remarks that Marcus made about the keyboard which is what we're going to look at today because his comments make the pocketbook make sense so should we have a quick look at it okay so you see we've got two identical devices here um, the acorn pocketbook has seen a lot more use than um, the the Scion because the uh, you know the legends are worn off the larger shift key etc um, but for all intents and purposes they're exactly the same they're exactly the same machine and the biggest difference you'll see is the way Acorn marketed these machines and when you power, I'll just move the Scion out the way, when you power the Acorn one on, you actually see that it's very similar on the screen, but they changed their that wording around. Abacus is what they call their spreadsheet, which is fine. Desktop button's the same, cards is just cards. But as you notice on the, the Scion one, cards is data, which is here. Okay, word is right on the acorn. So they they kind of change things about a little bit, you know. So, but at the end of the day, they're virtually identical machines. So, as you flick through it on the little touch sensitive screen here, you you go from desktop to cards to write to abacus to time to calculator and so on and the one thing you will notice is that it's got acorn written on here now they are 16-bit machines both of them they're identical machines this and the Scion 3 and 
they're multitasking as well, which is quite a nice thing to have in such a small device. But I, I kind of wondered why Acom would even think about bringing something like this out because it didn't actually, to me, when I first saw them, make a lot of sense because it was obvious and obviously that it was just one of these. And for some reason, I couldn't get my head around Acorn, who was an innovative player in the um, microcomputing field, why they would even bother. But Marcus's comments about it fits a child, it fits their hands and so on, because that makes perfect sense. Because Acorn launched the pocketbook as an educational tool. It was actually aimed at children. It was actually aimed for that market. It was no longer an executive toy, which is what the Scion 3 was advertised and marketed at. Now, there were identical machines, and it was all down to marketing as to where each machine fell in relation to each other. So... I think Acorn were kind of heading in the right direction where they wanted to get back into the educational market. But whether or not the Acorn pocketbook was the right way to go is another matter. But I think it's an interesting, interesting time and an interesting piece of hardware which kind of looks at where Acorn was at the time. And at the time... They were flailing a bit and failing as well. But at the end of the day, this machine, if it was solely an Acom product, marketed at education, it probably would have done very, very well. But as it is, it didn't really sell and it didn't make inroads because everybody and his uncle knew that it was a Scion. It was a rebadged Scion. And that took the gloss away from having an Acorn product in your pocket, which um, was a shame because the premise behind a small handheld device for educational use was brilliant because a lot of schools now use tablets. Each child has a tablet and they do the work on the tablet, they do all of their revision on the tablet and so on. And um, this was kind of a precursor to that. And it's just a shame that this machine, in a way, was out prior to it. And people kind of saw through it. But, you know, it's a piece of history. And it's one that, um, you know, forms a whole Acorn family pre-arm. So it's nice to have. I doubt there's very many around. So... It's just a nice relic from the past. Is it useful? It can be. I mean, to be honest, um, to do your notes on it, it's just like any other little word processor. Okay, the keyboard's limiting and the screen's limiting, but it's useful. I mean, it's, it's, it's useful. You can get away with it and you can just slip it in your pocket. And also, you can save the memory to memory card and then you can get a reader and work it from the PC or you can get a, a link and link this machine directly to an older PC but it's a hassle and is it a hassle worth kind of pursuing um yeah if you're a bit of a, a retro head or a person who just wants to be different then that's ideal and it's a bit more rob robust than the five because the way it pivots on its hinges, it doesn't have that trick slide out keyboard. So there's a lot less to go wrong with it. The question is, would I choose an acorn over a scion? Um, probably it would all depend on price. If the acorn was cheaper, then not a problem. I would have probably chose the Acorn just out of kind of brand loyalty in a way. Um, 
But in reality, more people bought the Scion than the Acorn, so it was kind of a no-brainer, really. The Scion was always going to win, and they probably saw the Acorn badged copy of it, just kind of a, a little bit of a of a side effect of producing the Scion, and it was a little bit more income for them running under a different badge. So there you have it. You have two machines, same badge. So it's kind of a relatively early badge engineering concept. And just to do a nice fair comparison, you can see this is the, the Scion power and on. And for want of a better term, there's not really a lot of difference. And it's basically got Scion instead of Acorn. Everything really is roughly the same and it works in exactly the same fashion. So you've got word, agenda, time, world. Now, the only thing that I think that is the Acorn pocketbook has over this, instead of agenda, it has a proper spreadsheet built into it where this one has an agenda, which is just basically a calendar and book your appointments. It's got word, which is the same. It has data, which is literally your cards, but everything else is the same. So coming back on what I said about the two machines, I still would have chosen the Acorn, mainly for brand loyalty, but also that spreadsheet option, which was built into it, was a little bit more useful than to me than an agenda. But I guess it's kind of horses for courses. If you were booking appointments all day long, then this would have been useful. But if you wanted to keep your notes on your expenditure and your fuel costs and all this kind of thing, well, the, the Acorn pocketbook would have been a much better prospect off the bat. But in saying that, both the Acorn And the Scion could run exactly the same software, so there was nothing stopping you chopping and changing programs via the memory cards. So, to be honest, you could take the cards out of here, pop them in the Acorn, and they would work exactly the same. So you'd have the same options on software. But, you know, as I said, out of the two, brand loyalty, it's going to be the Acorn. Um, maybe because... If you're around at the time when Acorn was popular, you kind of got brought up to it, indoctrinated into it through use of the BBC Micro and the Acorn Electronic Schools. And uh, it kind of sticks in your mind. So they're both good pieces of kit. They're both very useful. You can use them today if you really want to. And they're nice additions to have to, you know, your portable collection if you're into that side of things. Okay, so thank you for watching, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this insight into an Acom Pocketbook One. Hope you subscribe and I hope to meet you on this channel sometime in the future. Thank you. Goodbye.